there, and thank you for joining me for today's live reading of Stay For Me, Bale Fire Series, book number five by Tam DeRutter Jackson, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one, Olivia. Seeing him again was inevitable. I just didn't expect it to hurt this much. Ten years ago, Garrett Phillips made a decision. Fine, maybe I helped him make that decision but that's beside the point. He chose to go with his boys and leave me in the dust of a ratty old tour bus. The memory gripped my heart, sharp pain lancing through it, and I gasped in a breath. Curling my hands over the back of my chair, I stared at the man on the screen in front of me. There he was looking ridiculously hot in an Armani suit that fit him like he owned the company. Unlike his boys who showed up on the red carpet again, Wearing cheap t-shirts beneath their $5,000 suits, he actually wore a silk dress shirt and a tie. He'd cut his hair since the last time I Googled him. Short looked good on him. Who was I kidding? I liked his hair any way he wore it. Sometimes, like now, I could still feel his thick, coarse mane sliding through my fingers. On cue, that thought led to what we'd been doing the last time I had my fingers in his hair, and my body flashed fire. You okay, boss? You look a little flushed, Jeremy Rowland, my assistant, said. Would you like me to grab you a water? I blinked, and the world righted itself again. Wrapping my hand around my mic, I nodded. That would be great. Thanks. Blowing out a long breath, I willed myself to let go of the past. Garrett Phillips managed Balefire, the biggest rock band on the planet. But tonight, it was my job to make sure that the bad boys of rock and roll behaved on live television, or at least I could control the narrative with quick creative editing if the situation called for it. Judging from what I'd seen when I studied previous Grammy productions in preparation for directing this one, Balefire could, and likely would, cause a ruckus at some point in the show. I needed to be ready. If life were different, I might have coordinated with Garrett, had his help in making sure his boys played nice for national TV. I might have had him. Squeezing my eyes shut, I willed my mind to focus, to stay on point, point for the task at hand. I was well aware that landing the job of directing the Grammys, a woman at 33, was a monumental deal. I landed the gig because I was a rock star director and producer in my own right, something I needed to remember. If I wanted to run a large studio someday, which had always been the goal, I couldn't blow my first big chance especially not for a man who couldn't wait to start his dream, even if it meant leaving love behind. Here you go, boss. Jeremy handed me my water and glanced at the screen in front of me. Wow, is that Balefire? The awe in his voice revealed a true fan, all four of them with their ladies. No doubt they're going home with hardware tonight. They're legit. Arching a brow, I reminded him where we were and what he was supposed to be doing. Sorry, Olivia, sorry. A sheepish, sheepish smile slipped over his features. It's just, it's balefire. Like that explained everything, which it did. Damn it. It was difficult to hear my colleague over the screaming fans lining the red carpet. Staring at the screen and listening to the commentary through my headphones told me all about what an incredible job Garrett had done as a manager, making balefire into a household name all over the world. The band sold out arenas wherever they played. Every one of their albums had gone platinum, except for the first one, which only hit gold. No doubt, the players were stunningly talented musicians and songwriters in their own right, but they never would have come this far without the shrewd management of one man. To my disgust, my eyes strayed back to Garrett. Though each member of Balefire escorted a beautiful woman, no one was holding on to Garrett's arm. Somehow, being on his own made him even more dangerous. Somehow, it would have been easier to see him again in person for the first time in 10 years if he'd been with someone. Questions swirled through my head. Was he with someone but choosing to go solo tonight? Was he single? Was he still anything like the excited and exciting young man with stars in his eyes who left me behind to chase a different dream? Google never divulged these details, which left me to speculate. Zoom in on Chrissy Valor and Adam Tron, please. I directed into my mic. Immediately, all the feeds switched from the entire band to the bass player and the pop diva who joined Balefire during their last tour. 
With Tron's tall, dark good looks and Chrissy's blonde pixie cut and delicate features, the two made a stunning couple. Add to that the story of how her be valorous foundation to put an end to child marriage came to be, and the two of them would be a massive draw during ceremonies. On cue, our red carpet commentator stepped over to them. Thank you, Natasha, for asking, Christy said. It's the goal of the foundation to make it illegal for any girl younger than age 18 to marry for any reason in any state in the U.S. Since only adults 18 and older can divorce, it seems only right that only adults can marry. Anyone can help our cause by joining the Be Valorous Foundation. Natasha turned her mic to Tron. I understand Veilfire is part of the foundation? 100%. He stared into Christy's eyes with his harp in his. Hold the camera on them. We need this, I said into my mic. When Christy turned away from Tron's stare, I instructed the camerawoman and Natasha to move on to Parker Malone and Jennifer Hartwell, two major movie stars who attended the Grammys as presenters, more so to be seen than anything else. We gave them two seconds and moved on to Lady Gaga, who put on a show as only she could. The woman was every director's dream. On it, on it went until the stars took their seats in the cavernous space of the Crypto.com arena, more widely known as the Staples Center. I hadn't seen Garrett during rehearsals, which isn't exactly a surprise. The band didn't need their manager with them when they rehearsed, I supposed. Balefire would play their song with Christy Valor, the, the ones currently tearing up the charts, as one of the first songs to open the show. Later on in the production, they'd be playing their number one hit, Fire Me Up, one of their other songs with several nominations. The band was a musical juggernaut. As Jeremy rightly speculated, they'd win multiple awards tonight, no doubt. Another certainty popped into my head. Garrett would be at the after parties, the ones that, as director of the show, I was expected to attend. Any other time, I'd relish the opportunity to hang out with so many major musicians. But the idea of seeing Garrett again left a Gordian knot of gargantuan proportions twisting in my stomach. Knowing this would be my only moment of calm for the next three hours, I finished off my water in one long swig when we cut to commercial and opening credits. Pulling in a long breath, I held it, pasted it on my best smile, and spoke into my mic. Okay, folks, this is where shit gets real. Let's make this one of the most memorable events of the season. That's not the song they rehearsed, boss, my assistant director communicated as Balefire took the stage for their second song. I can hear that. I can also hear how incredible the song is. Seems like they're debuting something new and we're rec recording it first. Do not, I repeat, do not cut the sound. Set the timer back one second for censoring if we have to, but keep that feed rolling. As Balefire Antics went, debuting a new song live on the Grammys was tame. I had to hand it to them, it was a hell of a statement. The rumors of the band breaking up had run rampant since Chrissy Ballard joined their tour last summer and again when it came out she and Adam Tron were an item. But this anthem to the importance of brotherhood and the strong bond the band enjoyed shot down all the rumors. Not that I believe journalists and the tabs wouldn't be deterred from spreading them. The band probably didn't believe one song would end the rumors afterward. Parker Malone and Jennifer Hartwell stepped out on stage together to announce the vocal event of the year. I doubt anyone was surprised when they opened the envelope and said, Balefire with special guest Christy Valor. Did you like that little tune we played just now? Blue Connolly asked as he held his Grammy statue up. This kick-ass lady, he pointed at Christy Valor, is a blast to work with, but she's not breaking up Balefire. Thank you guys for inviting me to your party, Christy said, and thank you for supporting me and the B. Valoris Foundation. Adam Tron pulled her in for a one-armed hug and a lingering kiss to the side of her temple. Like every other woman watching, I imagine, I couldn't help but swoon a little at the casual way he showed the world how much Christy meant to him. Garrett used to be sweet like that, too. As soon as that thought intruded, I shook my head to send it packing. The days of caring affection for my college sweetheart were long past. I had a job to do when I was determined would make me a sought-after director for every music-related production in Hollywood. I couldn't let a long-ago love distract me from the ultimate goal. More than anything, I wanted to slide into a chair, put my feet up, and let the final applause wash over me. Of course, that wasn't an option. 
That's a wrap. Great work, everyone. Thank you. Nice job, boss. Natasha's voice was the first I heard in my headset, followed by Jeremy, several members of the camera crew, and the team sitting in front of the monitors in front of me in the control room. When the final credits rolled, we shut off our mics, took off our headsets, and let out an unprofessional whoop. Not since my days as a member of the crew for our college theater productions had I done that. Like lifting a lead ca lead cape off my shoulders, the pressure released, and I could breathe for the first time in months. Closing my eyes, I absorbed the goodwill of my team. Then the thought of ratings intruded, and the pressure dropped on me again. At least I could breathe for a minute. Olivia, the car is waiting outside. Time to bask in the glow of your success, Jeremy said with a smile. Nodding to the rest of my team, I followed my assistant out of the studio to the waiting town car. The first stop was the producer's party. As the biggest party of the night, it stood to reason that Balefire would be there, which meant Garrett would be there as well. Time to face the music. 